the first property says that if you have two distinct tangents intersecting each other at point r such that the parameter associated with the first point of contact is t1 and the parameter associated with the second point of contact is t2 then the coordinates of this point of intersection r are given by a t1 t2 comma a times t1 plus t2 yes let's quickly prove this well the parabola in interest is the standard rightward opening parabola y square equals 4ax because all in all we are dealing with parameters here i want you to recall the equation of tangent to this parabola in the parametric form it's given by ty equals x plus at square wherein t represents the parameter of the point of contact of this tangent line i know for the first tangent the parameter associated with the point of contact is t1 so the equation of the first tangent will be given by t1 y equals x plus a t1 square similarly for the second tangent the parameter associated with the point of contact is t2 so respectively the equation of the second tangent will come out to be t2 y equals x plus a t a t2 square now i want the coordinates of the point of intersection of these two tangents so obviously i am going to solve both these equations simultaneously for that take a good look take a good look how should you actually move ahead to solving them to solve them simultaneously the best idea is subtracting both of them isn't it let's do that when i subtract both of them what do i get i get t1 minus t2 y equals 0 plus a times t1 square minus t2 square okay so what do you get y is nothing but a times t1 plus t2 into t1 minus t2 upon t1 minus t2 this gets cancelled out and you are left with y equals a times t1 plus t2 which represents the y coordinate of point r now plug in this value of y in any one of the equations let's say this equation so what do i get t1 times a t1 plus a t2 equals x plus a t1 square so this gives you a t1 square plus a t1 t2 equals x plus a t1 square this gets cancelled out and you are left with just x being equal to a t1 t2 which represents the x coordinate of point r and bingo we have what we wanted the coordinates of point r which is the point of intersection of my two distinct tangents to this parabola as a t1 t2 comma a times t1 plus t2 see the story doesn't end here there is a very minute still a very strong observation hidden here what is it let me tell you first of all realize that small a quantity is positive right t1 and t2 are distinct real so their squares are also positive that means a t1 square is a positive quantity this is also positive similarly 2a t1 positive 2a t2 individually is also positive now please recall the geometric mean of two positive inputs x1 and x2 is given by under root of x1 into x2 at this point of time i want you to evaluate the geometric mean of the x coordinates of p and q it will come out to be under root of a t1 square into a t2 square which is nothing but a t1 t2 sitting over here as the x coordinate of point r next i want you to recall that the arithmetic mean of two inputs x1 and x2 is given by x1 plus x2 upon 2 so now evaluate the arithmetic mean of the y coordinates of p and q it will be 2 a t1 plus 2 a t2 upon 2 which is nothing but a times t1 plus t2 sitting over here as the y coordinate of point r and bingo my observation is complete what does it say it simply says that if you are aware of the parametric coordinates of the points of tangencies p and q then the geometric mean of their x coordinates will give you the x coordinate of point r and the arithmetic mean of their y coordinates will give you the y coordinate of point r where r represents the point of intersection basically in order to find the explicit coordinates of r 
all you need is the information of the parameters associated with the two points of tangencies P and Q. That's it. Moving on to the second property, let's understand what it says. Well, this property asks us to catch hold of two points. One is the point of contact of the tangent. Other is the point where the tangent intersects the directrix. This property claims that the portion sitting between these two points subtends a right angle at the focus. Yes, this is the claim of this particular property. Let's quickly prove it. Well, in here, the parabola in concern is the standard rightward opening parabola y square equals 4ax. So the directrix of it will obviously have the equation x equals minus a. Okay? My tangent line is having its point of contact as p. Let's say the parameter associated with p is t. In that case, the parametric equation of my tangent line will become ty equals x plus a t square. Also, q is the point where the tangent line meets the directrix, isn't it? Now, because q is lying on the directrix and the equation of the directrix is x, x equals minus a, that means the x coordinate of every point sitting on the directrix will be minus a. Hence, q will look like minus a comma something. That means minus a comma y naught, let's say. Right. What I have to prove, I have to prove that the portion sitting between P and Q, which is this PQ segment, subtends a right angle at the focus. Basically, I have to show that angle PSQ is 90 degrees. Or rather, in other words, I have to show that PS is perpendicular to QS, which equivalently means showing that slope of the PS segment into slope of the QS segment is minus 1. That is going to be the agenda. But before we try to find the respective slopes of PS and the QS segment, we need the explicit coordinates of the point Q and P. See, P has parameter T, so its coordinates will be given by AT square comma 280. What about Q? Q is sitting on the tangent, so it will definitely satisfy the equation of the tangent line. Let's see. It will give me ty0 equals minus a plus a t square. That means y0 will be minus a by t plus a t. Okay? Hence, what do I get? That the explicit coordinates of q are coming out to be minus a comma a t minus a by t. The moment I have the coordinates of P and Q with me, now I can proceed ahead to get the slope of the PS segment as well as the QS segment. Okay, let's begin with finding the slope of PS segment where P has coordinates AT square comma 280 and S has coordinates A comma 0. Use your two-point form to evaluate the slope. It is given by 280 minus 0 upon a t square minus a. So this will be 2 a t upon a into t square minus 1. A a cancels out. You're left with 2 t upon t square minus 1. Similarly, let's evaluate the slope of the q s segment where q you know has coordinates minus a comma a t minus a by t and s has coordinates a comma 0. Again, two point form. Difference of the y coordinates which will give me a t minus a by t upon difference of the x coordinates, which will give me minus a minus a. So this gives me a t square minus a upon minus 2 a t. A a cancels out, you're left with t square minus 1 upon minus 2 t. The moment you have the two slopes with you, you have to just check whether the product is coming out to be minus 1 or not. And it's straight away evident that when you multiply what you get, 2t upon t square minus 1 into t square minus 1 upon minus 2t, this will simply give you minus 1. And hence, it's proved that yes, angle PSQ is 90 degrees. So, please note what this property tried to tell you, that the portion of the tangent which is lying between the point of contact and the point where the tangent meets the directrix. This portion subtends a right angle at the focus.
Okay. Next up is property three, which is incredibly important when it comes to the application in the questions. So in here, I want you to be very attentive. It says that if you have two distinct tangents such that their points of contact are not just any two random points on the parabola, rather they are the end points of a focal chord, then both these tangents are perpendicular to each other and also their point of intersection lies on the directrix. So there are two claims here. First is that if you draw a pair of tangents at the extremities of the focal chord, they will certainly be perpendicular to each other. And secondly, their point of intersection will lie on the directrix. We have to justify both these claims. So let's begin one by one. C. In here, first of all, realize that if P and Q are the points of contact, let's say the parameter associated with P is T1 and the parameter associated with Q is T2. Then we've learned in property 1 that the points, point of intersection R will have coordinates A T1 T2, comma A times T1 plus T2. Right, this much we've learned in property 1. But realize that P and Q, as I said, are not any two random points. They are endpoints of a focal chord. So definitely, please recall the connection between their parameters. The product of their parameters will be minus 1. That means T1 into T2 will be minus 1. If T1 into T2 is minus 1, that means the x coordinate of R will be A into minus 1. That is minus A, which implies that R is going to lie on the line x equals minus a, which is nothing but my directrix. So one part of the claim is proved that if you have a pair of tangents drawn at the extremities of the focal chord, their point of intersection will certainly have its x coordinate as minus a. That means their point of intersection will certainly lie on the directrix. The only part left to be proved is that both these tangents are perpendicular to each other. For that, I am interested in showing that the product of their slopes is minus 1. So let's see how can we show that. Let's say m1 is the slope of the first tangent and m2 is the slope of the second tangent. For the parabola y squared equals 4ax, right now I want you to recall the connection between the slope and the parameter. Why? Because you know t1 is the parameter associated with the point of contact of the first tangent. And T2 is the parameter associated with the point of contact of the second tangent. Okay, so you can see that there is parameter coming into picture and also slope coming into picture. So I want you to recall the relationship between slope and the parameter for this parabola. It was that they were reciprocals of each other. So what I'm going to get is M1 will be 1 by T1 and M2 will be 1 by T2. Why did I do that? I want to show the two tangents are perpendicular to each other. That means I want to show the product of their slopes is minus 1. That's what I want to show. So let's consider the product of their slopes. But this is equal to 1 by t1 into 1 by t2, which is 1 by t1 into t2. But I know t1 and t2 are parameters of the endpoints of the focal chord, so that their product is equal to minus 1. Yes, that means this comes out to be 1 upon minus 1, which is minus 1. Hence, we've proved that because the product of their slopes is minus 1, that means the two tangents are perpendicular to each other. So second part of the claim is also proved. More than the proof, what is important here is the takeaway of this property because as I said, this is hugely applicable in questions. This property said that if you have a pair of perpendicular tangents, their point of intersection will always lie on the directrix. Conversely, if you pick up any point on the directrix, the pair of tangents that you draw from it will be perpendicular. Do you understand? Yes, that means now I am in a position to say that my directrix is nothing but the collection of all the points of intersection of mutually perpendicular tangents. Let me repeat, my directrix is coming out to be the collection of all the points of intersection of the pair of mutually perpendicular tangents. Is something striking? 
Can you recall something? Well, in the chapter circle, we have studied that the collection of the points of intersection of all the pair of perpendicular tangents is nothing but the director's circle. So, in here, what we can deduce is that the directrix of the parabola is what is the director's circle of that parabola. Because each point sitting on the directrix is nothing but the point of intersection of a pair of perpendicular tangents. All right. So, in case of circle, the director circle was coming out to be a circle only. But in case of parabola, the director circle is coming out to be a directrix. I know it's a bit odd because the name is involving circle. But actually, the answer is coming out to be a line. But yeah, that's how the case is. The director circle for a parabola is nothing but its directrix. So, if I ask you what is the equation of the director circle for the parabola y squared equals 4ax, in other words, I'm just asking you to tell me the equation of the directrix of this parabola, which is x equals minus a. Got it?